Hi there, I'm Victoria Perry with Perry Properties at Sotheby's International Realty, and I'm here in Manhattan's Midtown East Sutton Place neighborhood with James Neary, the owner of the much loved and famous Neary's that has been here on 57th Street and First Avenue since 1967. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Victoria. How are you? Great to see Very you. Glad um, to have you here. So yeah. tell us, how did you get into the, the business of pubs and restaurants? Actually, I, I was uh, 16 years of age and that's when I left school. I got a job in a drapery store, a beautiful drapery store in my hometown, Tubber Curry, in Sligo. And I was there a year, but he had a beautiful lounge bar. And I, all my life, I wanted to get into that bar. As I wanted to be a bartender, because there's more action, right? Got it. So eventually I got into the bar and I was there, and on August 14th, ninth, the day before the Feast of the Assumption in Ireland, I saw 14 lambs. And I took the money home and I gave it to my mom. And there was a young woman visiting my mother. She was going to school with my mother. But she came out to America when she was 17 years of age. And she was visiting it. And she said to me, would you like to go to America? I says, I would love to go to America. She says, I will sponsor you. So she sponsored me. The money I got for the lambs paid for my trip here on the maiden voyage of the Olympia Greek liner. Mm -hmm. And I had still had $97 when I got here to the United States. Wow. Would you happen to be from County Cork? Hell no. Why are you <laughs> choking me? I come from Tubber Curry in County Sligo. Okay, yeah, all sorry. right. 250 re- miles away from that. Got yeah. it. The reason why I ask is that my yes. maternal grandmother's family came from there. They were the Harrington oh. Hennessy's. Actually, it's the biggest county in Ireland. Oh, okay. County Sligo. Uh, no, I mean, County Cork is the biggest county in Ireland. Gosh. Yeah, it is, yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. I've yet to go. And it's they have a- the Brownie Stone there, which you got part of. Awesome. Awesome. So tell yeah, yeah. us, what makes uh, Neary so special? Actually, uh, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, Brian Mulligan and I were bartenders in P.J. Moriarty's mm-hmm. on Third Avenue. And uh, I flew home to Ireland to bury my mother on January 20th, 1967. And when I came back, back then you could bring sausages and bacon, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we were at Mass and St. Sebastian's in Queens. And Brian and his wife were there, so Eileen cooked his breakfast. And Brian had the New York Times. I used to read the Daily News. Yeah. But he had the Times. And we saw this place advertised in the New York Times. Okay. At 7 o'clock the next eve Monday, we turned around and we met this guy on the corner of 57th Street. We came in here, we looked at this place, and we put $500 down. $500 down? Okay. A place like this today, you wouldn't get in the door with the key for a quarter of a million dollars. Right. But uh, if we knew the history, if I'd had the $500 in my pocket, and we should have ran away because there were three restaurants and a delicatessen out here in seven years. But wow. we thank God I, we didn't know that. Okay. So anyhow, we worked as partners from, he was Moriarty's three years before me. I started there in 1954, uh, he started in 51. We were together from 1954 until 1985 as bartenders when he passed away. Okay. And then that's when you leased the place, uh, right? We, we leased we leased it on 1967. Okay. And on uh, actually it happened there was a Jewish delicatessen around the corner here, and the gentleman that owned it he used to close at 10 o'clock, mm-hmm. and he came over here breaking chops for me, right? Right. And he came in one night. And he said to me, this is 19 years later, he said to me, the Jewish people are the smartest people in the world and the Irish are the dumbest. I said, Stanley, what did I do wrong? He says, how could you let a guy upstairs buy this building over your head? I says, he doesn't have it. He says, he has it. Everybody not around here knows he has it. So I forgot about it. That was in April of 85. October 85, there's a couple of men from Colorado Springs. They're buyers, man and his wife. Mm-hmm. Drop off their luggage in the Lombardi Hotel. Yeah. Are here at five o'clock for an early dinner. It says, what a small world. We got talking to this guy on the plane. We told him we all supposed to near The guy says, my building. The same guy, upstairs, right? Right. The following Monday, I called Mr. Sindon. I said, Mr. Sindon, can I ask you a question? He says, yes. I says, does the guy upstairs own the building? He says to me, did I ever call you? I says, no. He hung up. I knew by that that he did not own the building. 
and the following May 31st, I'm coming to work and I see the gentleman putting furniture out on the, into a truck. Right. Three days later, I get a call from Mr. Sandville. This is the phone call. One million three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. Make up your mind in a couple of days. And he hung up. Entire conversation. That's how we dealt. Wow. Yeah. So, turned around. I called Bill Burke. He was from my hometown, Tupper Curry, and he was the president of the Bank of Ireland. And I says to him, would you give me a million, three hundred and seventy-five thousand? He says, are you getting the building? I says, I've got a shot. He says, I'll give it to you. All right. That's great. I called Paul O'Dwyer, my lawyer. I think he fell off the chair when I told him what I was paying for it. He says, let me put you on to my son, Brian. So I went on to Brian, and Brian says, are you going for it? I says, I am. He says, go for it. I called Mr. Senville back in less than a half an hour. And I says, I will take it. That's how you do it. Now I call home. Eileen. I didn't say another word. She was used to me. What did you do now? You're telling your wife about it now. Okay. I says, I borrowed a million three hundred and seventy five. You did what? <laughs> I says, I bought the billing. How in God's name are you going to be able to I haven't the faintest idea. And all she said to me was, Do you know what you did to us today? I said, No. You broke us for life and you'll make our children well off. <laughs> she, she's Broke right. us for life and made our children well off. That's, That's right. perfect. That's, right. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, I know that you feel like you don't work a day in your life here yeah. never at Neary's. Never have. I never even worked a day in my life in Ireland once, that... I, got, once I got into that bar because I loved it. You loved it so much. Yes, what, what do you love about it? I love people. You love people. I yeah. Love well, it's That's... evident. Yes. It's evident. What, are, what is your client base? It's, well, first of all, we have a dress code. Okay, yeah, that's so that, very nice. So, so I that, appreciate that. So that limits. Yeah, right. Them come in, right? Right. So every, everybody's come addressed. And this area where you're in is known as the Golden Ghetto. <laughs> the Golden Ghetto? I never yes. heard that. It is, a, uh, yeah. Okay. And when I opened in 1967, 57th Street was known as Fabulous 57th Street. Fa okay. In, in Architecture Design Magazine, right? Uh huh. And we made a little scene in that place in magazine at that time. And it was uh, 25 years later, it became Millionaire's Row. Right. And now do you know what it's known as? Billionaire's Row. Billionaire's Bonifar. That's right. Billionaire's Bonifar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And wh how has this neighborhood changed between 2nd oh. and oh, no, FDR? No, no change whatsoever. 57th Street over here has never changed. Certain places have never changed. Right. But all the avenues, they, they, were, they were all, when I started out in Murray Hardy's, they were all tenements back right. then. Now right. they're all skyscrapers yes. and apartment houses. That's right. So uh, with the closing of Elaine's um, on 2nd Avenue on the Upper East Side, how did that affect your business? Well, I tell you, we got a bartender from up there called Kevin. And um, Kevin wor is working here, hasn't been working here eight years. Yeah. And just last night was the eighth anniversary of the closing. Yeah. And every year, between 50 and 100 people coming and celebrate wow. the closing with Kevin in here. Wow. Yes. So you get some really yes. interesting characters. Oh, yes, we do, yeah. Yeah. We do, yeah. yeah. We do, yeah. And you said that there's a lot of different other types of people that come in, business yeah. people and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this was on New Year's Eve, I think it was 2011. I locked, I locked the door on New Year's Eve and I locked it on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Because I have to restrict who's coming in the world dressed right. Anyway, oh, wow. looking in the window, locked out, mm -hmm. President Clinton, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Commissioner Kelly and his wife, <laughs> Amir Bluebird and Diane. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Then you well, let them in? I did. I sure okay. did. I sure did. <laughs> and I sat them down at, at two tables on the side. I, that's all I had at the time. Right. At 12.30, 12 more come to join them. Okay. All of my customers got up to let them all sit down and they were here till four o'clock in the morning is that right uh, wow that's yeah. great it's a great night great yeah well well your uh walls here tell amazing stories oh, yeah, which is great. another reason why we want to do a few more videos here at neary's yes. because it's such a historical place yes. so many interesting stories um is there anything about the uh menu items on the you know the, the food well, or anything that you want to tell well, us well nation about? nationwide we can't think of her from in the sea. Today's show, 
moved into this area in 1986, mm -hmm. and she still comes to this day. She always came here with Frank too, and but people are on the show like Hoda, Jenna Bush, right. you name it. She brings everybody here. She comes here nearly every week, and she okay. loves the lamb chops. Okay. And she has mentioned them so often that it is number one awesome. on the list. Okay. But, but we have the corned beef is fabulous, the prime meal, everything. Fish is all fresh. Yep, yep. So, I've eaten yeah. here, I love it. Yes. Um, anything special going on in the holidays? Yeah, no, just be packed. We're just packed. just to be packed every We're day. Packed every day, we are. Well, thank you so much, Jimmy, for yes. joining us. So along with helping buyers and sellers and rentals throughout Manhattan, we at Perry Properties love producing up to three videos per week for you about New York City real estate, local business, and community events. So please hit the like button, make a comment, subscribe to our channel at Perry Properties Sotheby's International Realty. And thank you so much for your support and we'll see you next time.